So couples present for therapy for lots of different reasons, but if you do, we've done studies looking at the main reasons, and there seems to be three main reasons. Uh, the first one is, is communication, um, and, and the meaning of that differs from couple to couple, but it seems to be either that we can't get problems resolved, um, and so we keep having the same fight over and over again. Um, sometimes it means that, that arguments get out of control, um, and hurtful things are said, or, or things are done that, that really damages the relationship. Um, another common reason is, is a kind of a lack of emotional closeness. So, you know, even if you're not having big fights, uh, couples, you know, report just kind of drifting apart over time and, and kind of losing that love, losing that connection. Um, and so, and they don't really know how to get it back. Um, so they, so they look uh, to a couple therapist for help in doing that. Um, and then when you ask couples, a third kind of common response that you hear is, well, we're coming because we don't know what else to do. You know, we, we want to save our marriage, we want to save our relationship, and we don't want to go on living this way. Uh, but other than that, we're not really sure what to do, and so they're really kind of looking for some sort of outside assistance. Couples often wait a long time uh, before serious problems develop until they actually seek professional help. Studies suggest that it tends to be about six years on average. Um, and I think that's partially because we kind of have this feeling in, in our society that kind of, you know, our relationships, if we're in love, our relationships should just kind of work out. We shouldn't necessarily have to work on them. And so we kind of hope for the best and hope that things will, will get better. And, and sometimes that does happen, but a lot of times it doesn't. Um, and the unfortunate thing about waiting for so long, um, especially if, if the problems haven't gotten better, is by the time the couple enters couple therapy, not only is the couple therapist dealing with the original problem, but there's a lot of things that's been done, you know, a lot of collateral damage that's happened in the intervening years uh, that makes it much more difficult to, you know, to work with in couple therapy and, and you know, ultimately makes couple therapy uh, not quite as beneficial um, as if the couples had come in earlier. Uh, so my, my primary advice, I think, would be uh, to have couples uh, seek therapy earlier. Um, so, you know, in thinking about does my relationship need couple therapy? Do I need some sort of outside assistance? I think there's probably two guidelines I, I might suggest. Um, one would be if, uh, if kind of your attempts to solve whatever problem it is that you're dealing with, you know, those repeated attempts don't seem to be working, or in a lot of couples they actually make things worse. You know, that's a very t common pattern is, you know, I might do something to try to fix the problem and I'm doing it well-meaning, but it actually kind of creates the opposite reaction in my partner, which then kind of makes me react more strongly, and so we get and kind of, you know, it starts to snowball after a while. Um, so if that's happening, I think certainly uh, looking for some outside assistance is helpful. The, the second kind of uh, test of maybe some outside assistance would be helpful is if, is if, you've, if you know, because of the repeated fights, because the, of the, you know, just kind of time that's elapsed, uh, you've kind of, one or both of you has lost the ability to step into your partner's shoes. You know, because once you lose that empathy, it's a lot harder to perspective take. It's a lot harder to kind of um, start to, you know, kind of deal with your problems in a productive way. It's, it's, it's a lot easier instead to just kind of say, oh, you know, my partner's being selfish, my partner's being inconsiderate, my partner's being lazy. Um, and, and kind of once that happens, it's, it's pretty difficult to, to kind of backpedal. So it's not uncommon for one partner to be interested in couple therapy and, and wanting some outside help and the other partner being uh, resistant or uncomfortable in, in doing so. And so one of the questions that I often get from couples is, typically it's the wife calling saying, you know, I, I really think we need some help. How can I get my husband to do this? Um, and, and, you know, oftentimes that's a difficult situation because you know, on the one hand, the, the person who's, who's wanting help is, is not wanting to continue this um, and, and kind of just living the same life and the same relationship. And so the temptation is to kind of throw out the nuclear bomb there, you know, let, let me threaten divorce, I need to do something pretty intense, pretty severe to get my partner's attention. And that's probably not the best thing to do. It may work in the short term, but that may, you know, create more damage than it actually helps. Um, so it's, it's difficult, but what, what I suggest couples do is, is, you know, really try to think about how to approach their partner um, rather than kind of blaming, you know, you're doing this and so we need to couple, come to couple therapy. 
trying to think about things like, you know, I, I, I really miss what we used to have. Uh, you know, I really miss not fighting. I really miss just being able to, to sit next to each other and enjoy things, to be able to interact, to be able to have great sex and all of those things. And I really want to get that back, you know, and, but I'm not sure that given the path that we're on that we're ever going to get those back. Um, so this is what I this is what I want to do. I want to go to couple therapy. This is kind of the information that I have on it that I've been able to gather so far. Would you be able to look at this information? Um, you know, perhaps go on the website, look at these videos, uh, look at some information that I've gotten, um, and really kind of think it through. And, and ideally, I think at that point the partner then steps back and, and gives gives the other partner who's a little bit reluctant some time to think about it um, because. You know, it's, it's, if the other partner has been reluctant, they're probably not going to say, "Okay, you're right, honey, let's go." You know, it's it's going to be a, a bit of a process to come around to that, um, and so I think some some space after that initial in, in introduction of the idea is helpful um, because it's you know it can be a shock I think to hear from your partner, "We're so bad that we need couple therapy," and so I think. Uh, you know, kind of allowing that to, th uh, to sink in, first of all, is the first step. And then once that, once that information sinks in, okay, what are we going to do about this? You know, is, I understand, you know, that you're saying to me that, that we have serious problems. And while I might not feel that way, I guess you feel that way. Um, and, and you're saying couple therapy and, and okay, maybe we can think about that, but maybe I have some other ideas too. Maybe we instead want to go and talk to our religious leader. Uh, maybe we want to, you know, try to do a retreat, or we want to try some, to do some self-help stuff uh, before attempting couple therapy. Uh, and so, you know, allowing the other partner who might be a little more reluctant to be a part of that decision-making process, I think, can can be really helpful and, and really kind of a, an important first step towards kind of the couple, rather than kind of going back and forth and arguing, kind of really for perhaps the first time in a long time, being on the same page about something and, and working together as a team to ultimately improve their relationship. So, so the research on couple therapy suggests that it is actually pretty effective. Uh, if we look at uh, kind of the outcome studies that have been done, the, the longest follow-ups tend to be about five years, um, and we see that Five years after, after effective couple therapy, uh, it redu reduces the divorce rate quite substantially. Um, and couples who uh, maintain or gained during couples therapy, the couples whose relationships improve, tend to generally maintain those gains over time. And there tends to be you know, some slight decreases, and so perhaps five years later that couple might want to uh, do some, some additional things to perhaps improve their relationship. But that's, that's a pretty effective treatment when you compare it to you know, certainly treatments for depression, treatments for anxiety, or even medical treatments. Um, it's, it's, you know, couple therapy is, is as effective or perhaps even more effective than, than some of the other treatments out there. Well, so a lot of couples are, are hesitant to seek couple therapy. Um, there's the money, there's the time issue. You know, it's hard to get both partners, uh, find a time where both partners can come in, especially when they have children or when they're both working. Um, and there's also sometimes some reluctance to talk about very personal issues. You know, sometimes it's, it's hard to come in and talk with a stranger about uh, sex. It's hard to sometimes talk, come in and talk to a stranger about, you know, doubts about whether I can truly love someone or truly be loved. And, and so, you know, because of all of those reasons, um, couples often turn to other types of resources. Uh, and, and those things can sometimes be helpful. Uh, so couples will go to individual therapy sometimes. Um, Although I think if, if your partner is, is willing and able to go, I, I would probably suggest couple therapy over individual therapy. But in cases where the partner isn't willing to go, uh, individual therapy can be a, uh, an alternative. Um, other couples uh, seek out self-help books. Uh, and there's some evidence to suggest that, that self-help books can be effective. They're, they're not as effective as, as couple therapy, but on the other hand, they're a lot cheaper and they're a lot easier. Um, so for some couples, I think it makes you know, some sense to potentially try some self-help books. If they're going to go that route, I would certainly encourage them to uh, you know, 
kind of really research the book potentially and, and try to find some things that have a, some, some research basis because there are books out there that you know are, are very much grounded in the empirical le research and, and sometimes even based on an empirically kind of validated couple therapy approach and because when you wander into the self-help section of, of uh, you know your local bookstore or go on to you know, online it's there's a lot of relationship books out there and, and you know some of them I am not very confident in more recently, uh, other couples are turning to the internet uh, for uh, relationship help, and there are some some, some good information sources out there. Uh, the National uh, Healthy Marriage Resource Council has a website uh, called Two of Two of Us dot org, uh, where couples can go to to watch videos about common relationship problems and and uh, you know, f uh, find out information about common relationship problems. Um, if couples are interested in, in it's doing a self-help experience online. Uh, we actually have a website, ourrelationship.com, O-U-R, relationship.com, um, and, and that's based on a, an empirically supported uh, couple therapy. And what we've done is, is tried to really condense that therapy and uh, do it in a uh, kind of you know, s six hours or less type of approach. Uh, and, and our research so far suggests that that, that seems to be effective in, in couples like that. That, and that you know ultimately that may not be enough, but it's often kind of a foot in the door, and it helps couples to understand their problems. So if they ultimately do decide they want to go to couple therapy, they have a head start, and I think a better handle on, on kind of it, what it is that they want to 